Okay. Thank you. My name is Yen. I'm from uh, Samsung Advanced Packaging Team. It's my honor today to present uh, the advanced uh, packaging technologies for chiplet ad adoption and uh, memory integration in HPC and AI applications. So this slide shows the outline of the presentation. First, uh, we're going to have an uh, introduction. And then after that, uh, we'll talk about uh, advanced packaging turnkey solutions provided by Samsung. And then um, last but not the least, we're going to talk about the future trends and then insights. So this, the graph on the left uh, shows the market needs, right? Basically, we all know that the transistor number basically double almost roughly two years. But the graph on the right hand side uh, demonstrated the challenges for silicon level scaling and the yielding. It, it is getting more and more difficult and expensive, right? To use the traditional method to increase the uh, transistor number. So that's why uh, advanced packaging is getting more and more important to the industry. Because advanced packaging could enable chiplet heterogeneous integration and it also enable die stacking, right? It can uh, make the high yielding small chips uh, and then integrate them together, and then allow you to choose optimized uh, process selection. You really don't have to uh, use all the advanced know, right? And then it could also enable modular design. Design, reuse, and the mix and match makes it possible, right? And also die stacking uh, in advanced packaging technique could dramatically uh, reduce the uh, device footprint. But uh, we have to address tremendous technical and logistic challenges to successfully uh, having the heterogeneous integration, which include, uh, for example, multi-domain cone design involving both power and then signal routing, thermal management sometimes could kill a project, and then facilitate industry open platforms and then standardizations. And also, last but not the least, establish and clarify agreements. So, uh, so the interconnects that connect die to die keep on scaling down because we want the denser and the smaller interconnects to imp improve the performance of our device. So once it's the, the uh, bump pitch scaling down less than 20 micron, the solder-based thermal compressive bonding technique will be replaced by copper pad-based uh, hybrid bonding because of the defects, right? Um, so the hybrid copper bonding could provide tighter bump pitch, uh, smaller bumps, and then it, because it's gapless, there's no underfill, right? So it have lots of thermal advantages. So you can see that from this uh, graph, demonstrate that performance and market need to drive bigger packages for because we want to put more chiplets and more HBM to one single package. But once the package goes bigger and bigger, they bring tremendous assembly challenges. And so that calls for innovative memory integration instead of just putting side by side with the logic chips. So this graph shows um, Samsung advanced packaging turnkey solution. So we provide end to end, which means start from the very beginning of your product design all the way to manu uh, mass production of your product. We are flexible. We actually accept uh, other foundries and other memory vendors. And all we, uh, we also can work internally with Samsung Foundry and Samsung Memory. So, um, so we, that's why we are very um, uh, synergy and uh, we have a very good ecosystem. We have partners work with us so that we can provide our turnkey solutions and customers just to focus on their innovation. 
So this um, slide shows a menu of what we are providing for HPC and the AI marketing. So you can see that on the left, uh, we do provide 2.5D, which is already in mass production. I stands for interposer, S stands for substrate. So this is the interposer, silicon interposer based um, 2.5D. And then you can see that uh, right now we provide the 3X radical. Um, silicon interposer size, um, number of HBM we can integrate up to eight, uh, microbound pitch 40 micron, uh, interposer C4 pitch is a 150 micron, package size 85 by 85, and then uh, this is uh, some, something on our roadmap which we already have project uh, engagement, uh, radical size, uh, uh, silicon interposer size could be four, and then 12 HBM could be integrated along with uh, a couple of uh, logic uh, chiplet. Microbound pitch could be down to 20, 25 micron. And then package size could be in increased to 100 by 100 millimeter square. Um, additionally, we also provide a panel level um, we call I cube E, so also 2.5D, but it's RDL based uh, interposer. And we, we put a silicon bridges uh, embedded into those RDL interposer that can provide a locally dense interconnect. This one, we match the performance with the iCube-S, but this one, uh, it has potential to be bigger than the silicon interposer solution. And also, from the cost point of view, it could be, uh, very, uh, could be much cheaper because it's a panel level uh, process. And then you use less silicon, as the uh, local dense um, interconnects. We also provide a, a 3D integration, which means that uh, we could um, um, stack your logic or your memory on top of your bottom die, right? So for that, we provide uh, either thermal compressive bonding solution or a hybrid bonding solution. So for thermal compressive bonding, current uh, um, capability is 25 micron bump pitch, silicon thickness is 40 micron. But we do have this uh, in the near future, it can go to 21 micron. Um, but beyond that, you have to switch to hybrid bonding which uh, bump pitch could go to four micron, right? And the silicon thickness could be 10 micron for each stack. Because like we said, thermal management sometimes can kill a project. So we do provide a thermal simulation support to our customer in the early beginning of the um, management. So this page shows the future trends and the insights. As we uh, said that once the uh, package size goes bigger and bigger, it has lots of assembly uh, and reliability uh, challenges. So uh, we could, uh, uh, we provide a solution which we already have customer engagement. So we have the DRAM core die stack to a customized logic die, and then that logic die could have provided the buffer function of a traditional HBM. In the, in, by doing that, we can save 40% uh, uh, power and then also 10% less latency. We also have uh, a solution which we could uh, uh, have in cache DRAM stacked on a, a customized uh, uh, logic die. This could also provide 60% power efficiency and 50% latency. This is more kind of like future project. So in terms of the interconnects, um, currently we, are pro we provide the solder-based microbump by thermal compressive bonding if the bump pitch is larger than 20 micro. But in the future, uh, we already uh, have customer engagement. We can provide a copper to copper bond through th a hybrid copper bond, and which could have uh, just a few micron in bump size and bump pitch. By doing that, we can have uh, more than 100 and denser interconnects, and after to 150 more bandwidth and 30% more allowable to power because of the thermal advantage. So we, we all uh, know that optical interconnects could be a promising approach. Uh, 
in, in the future because uh, it, it could provide ex exceptionally high bandwidth densities by using optical, optical I.O. And also has ultra low power consumption per bit and then per distance. That's the beauty of optics, right? We do observe there are two trends in the industry to further develop this optical I.O. One trend is we use an optical I.O. to directly connect logic to HBM or, uh, or memory or logic to logic. Right? The other trend is we use optical I.O. to connect the logic uh, package versus and, and also memory package, basically disaggregation. Right? So that's the other trend. Um, we are working together with our partners to make this happen. So if you are interested, please feel free to talk to us. And that's our, also our future uh, trends and insights. So this is our group. We are based in San Jose and um, First Street. So feel free to send us email or visit us. We are happy to collaborate with you. Thank you. Any questions? So question regarding for this uh, hybrid bonding, right? And as uh, well, you carried out by the wafer level or the dye level? Uh, with a uh, uh, dye to wafer. Currently it's dye to wafer. Dye to wafer? Yeah, w has customer engagement. Okay, yeah. so this, uh, well, regarding for the HBM, uh -huh. and that to that stacking also was carried out by the hybrid bonding that? For HBM3, uh, we are doing like a microbound based thermal compressive bonding. Oh, I see. For HBM4, it's not decided yet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And how to care of this uh, particle and the surface flatness for the hybrid bonding? Yeah, that, that's definitely one of the key challenge to make hybrid bonding successful. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? So. I've got one. So, um, in customer engagement, you know, putting a custom chiplet together, you know, how how much does the customer affect the yield? How much the customer affect the yield? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but depending on the customer to give you something that. Yeah, it works, right? uh, exactly. That's why we need a close collaboration uh, with experts from both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Once we have customer engagement, we'll have Korean team also join us to make sure that it's feasible also. Yeah. And are, are there mechanisms for doing very, very small batches? And yeah, we do support that uh, um, if we, yeah, we both side, we agree, and then so on and so forth. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Um, about the hybrid bomb, right? You mentioned you, you are working on a die to wafer hybrid bomb. Uh, is there any plan or schedule for wafer to wafer? Yeah, wafer to wafer, we already have a, a mass uh, production, but it's on a completely different uh, application. It's not in semiconductor, not in the HPC area. Uh, if there is a need, um, we should be able to uh, start that, but for mass production and then for the roadmap on on the pack advanced packaging, currently we we have only dye to wafer. Uh, but th if there's a need, uh, we are kind of flexible. We do have that technology, you know, in house. Okay, let's thank our speaker. Thank you.